Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Powered by Come On Now, the podcast where we talk facts over feelings. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. I got another rant for you today. Did you even know? That's the question I have. Did you even know? But before we jump in, thank you so much for continuing to support this channel. We greatly appreciate you. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Hit that bell. Become a member tomorrow night. We're going our members live, 9 p.m. Members live, 9 p.m. So be there. Don't miss it. It's the first of many every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. So did you know? My guess is you probably didn't because I didn't know. I had no idea. I was I was too busy watching college football on Saturday, watching NFL football on Sunday, actually sleeping as well because um, I did watch the Dolphins game. but. For the most part, just relaxing, had no idea, had absolutely no idea. What did I have no idea about? Saturday, USC and Juju Watkins hosted the Notre Dame Fighting Irish and Hannah Hidalgo and Company. Yeah, that was the game Saturday. Had no idea. I was busy watching college football, which I watched the entire day. And I got three TVs behind me, and I still had no idea. If I had known the game was on, I would have certainly, certainly turned it on. So, yeah, like I said, if, if I had known the game was on, I, I would have turned it on because I, I want to see it. I, I do want to see it. I want to I want to I want to get draw my own conclusion from what I'm watching. And but I did. The game was at 4 p.m. is what I just found out. The game was at 4 p.m. on a, on Saturday. So it was competing against certain college football games. I don't recall who was at the 330 slot or what have you. But needless to say, you had an arena that was 3,000 seats short of being full. Remember, they only played a 10,000-plus seat arena at USC. So you couldn't sell out. USC did play... UCLA in football, but that was on Saturday night. That game was at 1030 at night, Eastern Standard Time. So that means it started at 730 on the West Coast. This game started at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so it was 1 o'clock on the West Coast. All that said, Notre Dame kicked USC's ass. You can sit here and say what you want. It was a seven-point game going into the fourth quarter. And at that point, Juju Watkins had 16 points. She finished with 24. They lost by 13, 74-61. Juju Watkins did not score one point until the 239 mark of the fourth quarter. Her first point in the fourth quarter was with two minutes and 39 seconds to go in the game. At that point, the game was 70 to 49. They were getting their asses kicked. She ended up scoring three more buckets, all layups in the final two and a half minutes of the game. Needless to say, that's what we refer to as stat padding. So her numbers of 24 points, <clears throat> realistically, she had 16 points when it mattered. And in the final two and a half minutes, she added eight more on some buckets. So she finished, I think, four of seven in the fourth quarter and with eight points and a turnover and an assist. All that said, she didn't show up. She didn't show up when it mattered. Fourth quarter, when it mattered, she did not show up. In the meantime, Hannah Hidalgo goes for 24 points, 9 of 21, 6 rebounds, 8 assists, 5 steals. She plays 39 minutes, and Juju did play 39 minutes, 39 minutes as well. She balled. Olivia Miles had 20 points, 7 of 12. Eight rebounds, seven assists, three steals. Notre Dame is a thing. Notre Dame is a team to be reckoned with, no question about it. But USC is supposed to be loaded. Loaded or not, they ain't show up in the fourth quarter. They got their tails kicked in the fourth quarter on their home floor. That's the reality. That is the reality. But all that said, Juju Watkins is supposed, to be, is supposed to be the next Caitlin Clark. So I've been told. So Monica, so Monica McNutt has told us. 
She has that nice, nice game. All she does is get buckets. She's a bucket getter. Well, she didn't get any buckets in this game. And right now, her numbers are way down in comparison to last season. But again, no one even knew that she was playing. Realistically, we we have no TV ratings. I have no idea what the ratings are. I presume they're going to be pretty awful, as has been the case for pretty much all the women's college basketball games so far this year. Comparatively, Iowa last year in their season opener had almost 600,000. This year they had like 200,000. Playing the same opponent, Virginia Tech. That's television viewers. So the Caitlin and Clark effect is real. These folks think that this stuff, what made the Caitlin Clark thing so, it was organic. I keep saying organic, organic, organic. Organic leads are legitimate leads. Paid leads are different. It's like in anything. Like you have an organic thing develop or it's paid. Right now, what people are trying to do, what ESPN is trying to do, what the puppet McNutt, the puppet McNutt is trying to do, is fabricate and make fraudulent shit out of what they got. They're trying to push and push and push, rather than letting it happen organically. I said it before, organically is what works. Organically is what people care about. If you push it down people's throats, they're not going to want to. They're not going to like it. So Notre Dame played USC. Notre Dame whips USC. They're now ranked number three in the country. <clears throat> Who knows where USC goes from here? I mean, USC's going to have a great team. It's not a matter of them not having a great team. They're going to have a great team. But let's talk about the other game that happened this past weekend, another game that we had no idea was even happening, that being the USC. USC is in South Carolina traveling to UCLA. So two games in California, two games in Los Angeles were pretty big things on the on the radar. And this game again, 4 p.m. start. Now, this building was full. This building was full. But who was it competing against? It's competing against the NFL. I don't remember what, who the 4 p.m. game was. Was it uh, – it wasn't Dallas and Washington, was it? I think that was at 1. I'm not sure. It doesn't – see, uh, San Fran and – San Fran and um, Green Bay, I think, was the four, one of the 4 p.m. games. Whatever. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is UCLA invites South Carolina into their building and gives them an absolute ass beatdown. They beat their ass. This was a 21-point game at halftime. It was 43-21, to 22. 43-22 UCLA at the half. I think we found out one thing about this game. And again, I didn't see it. I'm looking at the stat box. I'm looking at the what the reality is. And I'm looking at the fact that the matter is Malaysia Full Wiley, who's supposed to be South Carolina's best player to most people, got benched. She played three minutes. She played three minutes. She took two bad shots and sat her ass, and Dawn Staley sat her ass on the bench. And people are losing their minds. These are some of the comments off of uh off of this game and, and the fact that she she said apparently she was in tears on the bench. Well, I, I don't know why a player would be in tears on the bench by getting benched. It happens. So you have someone here saying um, on, on Twitter, Malaysia is crashing out on the bench right now in tears, and Jolette and Khadija had to console her a bit. You know what? Buck up. Buck the fuck up. Are you serious? I think it's telling enough that she comes off the bench and she's not a starter. I think that's telling. <clears throat> what it tells me is that Dawn Steely does not consider her mature enough at this point. So the question is, do you trust Dawn Staley and her opinion on players, or do you trust the, the sophomore, Malaysia Fulwiley, who is as talented as it gets? I don't know who you, t- you trust. I would think you would trust the coach that's won a couple of national championships, the coach that won a title last year, the coach that, in large part, most people think is the best coach in the country right now, even ahead of Gino Ariema. Now, this is the first game in which Full Wiley's been completely benched. She played 19 minutes, 22 minutes, 25 minutes, 18 minutes, 15 minutes. She's not playing big-time minutes right now. Her best game, she had 23 points versus Coppin State in a 32-point win. 
But otherwise, she's had 7, 12, 18, and 4. She had a good game with 18 against NC State in 18 minutes. But she's not starting. And I think that's something to be looked at. And it's going to be something that is going to be on the top of mind for a lot of South Carolina fans and maybe even Full Wiley herself. Here's another comment. Dawn Staley is too scared of a few turnovers to play her best player, Malaysia Full Wiley. No wonder great guards never come out of South Carolina, one ex-user tweeted. tweeted. Um, Malaysia Full Wiley isn't only the best player on South Carolina, but she's the, one of the best players in the country, and she's played under 10 minutes in a top-five matchup. Another one. Um, let me see here. There's some other ones here. Malaysia Full Wiley needs to hit the transfer portal after this season. This is sabotage. See, it's comments like that that I got a problem with. I don't like that. The thought that you got benched, that you might run to the transfer portal, is weak. It's just flat out weak. If you're going to run away from the competition, then you don't belong here. Then you're not really that type of player. People get benched. It happens. It happens. You do things the wrong way, you will be sitting your ass on the bench. And I give Don Staley a lot of credit for not, you know, bowing down to her young sophomore, you know, guard. And if she feels a certain way about how the girl is competing, and whether it's in practice or her attitude on the floor, I, I don't know. But she must feel some kind of way that would make her sit full Wiley on the bench after three minutes and not play her again. Another person said, zero chance full Wiley is a Gamecock next year, and that might be the beginning of the end. Give it a break. Stop it. Someone says, Malaysia full Wiley transfer, sweetie. You're a starter on another team. Now, let's take a look at this because they got their asses kicked. I think what we're finding out and what you're learning about South Carolina is that their inside game is trash. They don't have an inside presence. Camilo Cardoso was why South Carolina was so good last year. It's, it's as simple as that. If you take Camilo Cardoso off of that last year's team and you put them on the floor against Iowa, Iowa runs them off the floor. Iowa beats the brakes out of a, out of a South Carolina team last year without Cardoso. Keep in mind the fact that Iowa beat that team two years ago with Aaliyah Boston and Cardoso. But if Iowa, with Caitlin Clark last year, played this South Carolina team, they would have absolutely kicked their ass. Because the one area in which South Carolina was completely dominant was rebounding. It was rebounding. The size. The size difference absolutely crushed Iowa. It was just too much. And Cardoso was the reason. She dominated the paint. And whether or not she grabbed the rebound or not, because of her presence, if she went up for a board and she didn't get it, her teammate did. Because there she's being double team, double and triple teamed around the basket. People are trying to box her out. They leave their person open. They grab a rebound, lay up. That's reality. Raven Johnson starting. Quite frankly, her numbers this year are, are terrible. 3.3 points, 5.8 rebounds, 2.2 assists, 20% shooting. I mean, people will sit here and say she's a first-round pick. I, I I don't think – not like this. Don't tell me that defense makes you a first-round pick in the WNBA. The WNBA is not the easiest league to get into by now, if you haven't noticed. Players get cut in the first round. Tahina Papal, Pau Pau, she had 18 points. She's a starter. Bree Hall is a starter. Between three players, you had Chloe Kitts, Bree Hall, and Raven Johnson combined to go three of 17. Those are three starters. Chloe Kiss averages by almost 12 and, and nine. So that was a brutal game for her. Bree Hall is averaging six and a half, 3.8. <clears throat> I mean, realistically, they're, they're not the team that you thought they were. Like, they're not that good. I'm just going through their, to their through all their numbers and their players. Pow Pow is their leading score. She's shooting over 52% from the field. On the bench, Tessa Johnson, she's averaging 9.3. You know, it, it's not 
It's not the team that you saw before. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. This is not last year's team. It just isn't. But what you have at UCLA, you have a big, a dominant big. Lauren Betts is a dominant big. She's six foot seven. She's a big ass girl. She shoots over 70% from the field. She's averaging 19, four, 12 boards, 71% shooting 2.6 blocks. I mean, she can't make a free throw, but she is absolutely killing it, man. I mean, the girl is absolutely dominant around the paint, in the paint. And, and that's going to be the biggest difference for UCLA this year. UCLA, they're, they're a legitimate, a legitimate, legitimate threat. And I think if they play UC, USC again, they beat them again. Because that size is just different. You have no one that can compete with Lauren Betts. No one. On, on, uh, on South Carolina. But this game was a 21-point game at halftime. They kicked the crap out of them. They kicked the crap out of them. But again, here's the question. Did you even know the game was happening? I, I, I genuinely ask people, did you even know this game was happening? Because I had no clue. I watch TV. I'm a TV watcher. You see, I got all my TVs in the background. I got tons of TVs. I'm always watching TV. It's a problem. I know. I need, I need therapy for it. But I'm always watching TV. So I always know when sports are going on. Typically. It's very rare that I don't know <clears throat> when a sporting event is going on because I'm watching NBC because I watched part of that Notre Dame um, Army game, and I don't remember seeing any, any um, commentary on, that, on, these, on this game yesterday or on Saturday because this game was on – Fox, I was actually on Fox Sports 1, so I was wa I watched the Colorado game against Kansas. They didn't mention the game. They didn't mention this game. I mean, mind you, it was at the same damn time, but they never mentioned it. I, I watch TV, so the fact that I've seen, I saw nothing come up about these two games tells me all you need to know. What? Who, who watched? Who watched? I think we learned one real clear thing. UCLA is the, is the best team in the country right now. UCLA is, UCLA is now ranked number one. They went right past Connecticut. UConn did not. UConn was ranked two. They stayed at two. I think people have seen that UCLA is, the, is, is, is that team right now. They, the size. Women's basketball, when you have someone that's six foot seven that has touch around the basket, shooting 71%. And understand, this is not something crazy. And she didn't have a great game in this game. She only had 11. She had 11 and 14. She was five away from the field. <clears throat> but she had four blocks. She, she, was, she commands attention. The Lauren Betts last year shot 64.3% from the field. Like, this is not new. She's dominant. She's dominant. But again, the question is, did you even know the games were happening? And that's why, when I, when I, like, we all, knew, last year, we all knew every single time Caitlin Clark would be on that floor. We knew. We all knew. It wasn't because I was looking for it. It's because it was being told over and over and over again. They were telling us. They were reminding us. Commercials, blah, blah, blah. Iowa's playing X, Y, Z. Maybe I was paying attention more. I don't know. And I do know that they're picking up this USC-UConn game on the 21st. And Notre Dame does play UConn, I think, the 12th around there, or the, something like that, around the 10th, 11th, 12th of December. But at the same time, we didn't know. And you had two monster games, one of which did not sell out, and neither of them got anything in terms of ratings. And we don't know the ratings anymore because the ratings right now have been really, really protected when it comes to, you know, women's basketball because they've been trying to feed you this load of goods that, the, that that their ratings are through the roof and how women's basketball is the hottest thing going. It's not. It's not. Like, I've, I've, I Google UFC, UFC Notre Dame women's TV ratings. 
I don't get anything in terms of ratings. I get an ESPN story, Yahoo <clears throat> ranking, Sports Illustrated story. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, here's some ratings for the final four. But you get zero in terms of the ratings. So it tells you and it tells me all I need to know that they're not posting this stuff because the reality is here, this is page two on a Google search. The women's national championship game. Like I'm not looking for that. I'm I'm looking to see what the game did two days ago. And that you you get nothing. You get absolutely nothing. What's new? I mean, we already, I mean, Navy, Notre Dame, that, that's showing up. Why that's showing up, I have no idea. Yeah, there, there's nothing here. There's absolutely nothing that, that shows up. So, yeah, I, I got to wonder. I mean, I got to wonder. The ratings, you'll never get the real ratings. That's what's going to happen this year. You won't know. But I do know is this. I had no idea the game was going on. What Did you know? Let me know your, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'd, I'd love to hear what you guys say about this. I mean, is, is Full Wiley going to be out the door at you at South Carolina? I have no idea. I mean, Dawn Staley, she she put her foot in the sand, man. I give her credit. She put her foot in the sand. And I think it would be a lot more character building if Full Wiley was to stay than to run away. I, I can't stand the player that runs away when they finally get challenged. He drives me crazy. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Did you watch either of these games? Did you even know they were going on? Because it was challenging college football and NFL. No idea. Two upsets per se, and one clear favorite now to win the national championship amongst the women. UCLA. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. This is Rudy's Rant, Facts of Our Feelings. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, ring that bell, be on, get that membership so you can be on that membership live with us tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Come on now.